continuing to discuss models in our application, in our MVC application, the first thing that models let us do um, much more efficiently is just they collect up larger amounts of data more cleanly. So we can have an object that has one, two, three, 17 different fields or properties. And that's pretty easy to do. If we were to say, uh, continue to try to store our data using collections, data structures and strings, uh, that would that would quickly get very complicated. So imagine the situation where we still have a list of strings uh, storing the names of the events, but we wanted to add um, a new field to uh, to each event. So we would be, say, having a description, which is what we're going to add in a moment. To, to store both the name and the description gets pretty clumsy. You would probably do something like make a list that contains hash maps. Um, and then for a third field, it would get even more complicated. So um, thankfully, events objects, model objects, let us bundle up lots of related data much much more easily. So let's go and see how that works. I'm going to add a description field to my event object, so private string description. This will just be a description of the events. And uh, what else do I need to do? I want to add this to my constructor. So you know, you can build constructors in different ways. I can make this optional. Um, I could have different constructors for providing just a name or just a description. Um, here, I really want to actually just do both. So the only one, the only option I want to give. Uh, for creating an event object is to initialize it with both a name and a description, essentially making those both required fields. Okay, that's that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and make some getters and setters. And there we go. And I could uh, update my two string method. I'm just going to leave it as, as is for now. So now our event model class has two fields. Let's um, think about what we need to do in order to wire this up into the application. The controller itself really isn't going to need to do too much differently than it is now. We see we do have a compiler error here. That's because I changed uh, I changed the signature of the event controller. Now there are two required parameters. So um, anytime you make a change like this, following the breadcrumb trail of compiler errors is a good place to start. This is telling us that we need to provide a description in addition to providing a name when creating a new event. So um, where will that come from? Well, that leads us back to the form where this is created. So let's go and look at the form. The form itself has just one text input. I'm going to copy paste that text input and, and uh, change it a little bit so that it functions as a field for our description. Uh, it's still going to be type equals text. I'm going to call this event description now in the name attribute. Um, and I have my bootstrap classes already here because uh, I copy pasted and it looks like that'll do the trick. So I'm going to copy the name attribute here because recall that's going to be what uh, gets passed into the request. And so I want to use that to pull out the name over here. So let me make a new request param. String event description. And I'm missing a comma. That's the that's the issue. Let's try this again. There we go. Okay, so now I just want to use this parameter in my controller, and uh, well, in my constructor rather. So now I'll create an event with the name and the description as passed in, and so that should that should work. That should uh, create new event objects with the given name and description. Um, Let's think about what else we need to do. We also need to change if we want to if we want the descriptions to be visible, we should change the event listing as well. So let's go do that. Here's my event listing. Right now I just have one column in my table that has a name. Let's make a, another column. Call it with the, the header description. All right, and then I need to uh, repeat the uh, TD down here below. H colon text equals, and then I'm going to reference event dot description. Now recall that this implicitly calls the getter for that property on an event object. Okay, so let's test this now. We should be able to um, now add an event with both a name and a description and see that change displayed or that new data displayed in our event listing table. Okay, let's go to the form. So I haven't done anything yet, but I do see that I have my new header. That's good. A new uh, table column with a new header. I have two form fields here. That's good as well. Notice the nice little like, styling here with these uh, these labels and these inputs. 
that we get from Bootstrap. That's way better than what we were doing previously. So um, let's say WWDC. This is the description. Apple's developer conference. And we'll create that. And then we see that uh, in the table. Let's do one more. Let's create, uh, let's say, Strange Loop. That's a really cool conference in St. Louis. Uh, and we'll create that. And there we go. So we've added data quite easily, actually, to our model class. And we're easily able to display that on the front end. And uh, as I said before, you could try to do this without using model classes. It's going to quickly get very complicated, though. So um, this is just the first of, of several fields we'll be adding to our event models over time. And uh, thanks to the design pattern of using MVC and specifically models, this will become a relatively routine affair.